Hello, so tonight I'm going to be imaging the crescent neck. Why am I always repeating the things you already read? Big brains, big brains. <laughs> Okay, so I have to say that uh, most of the times uh, I really like the names that the astronomers uh, and the scientists give to the different uh, deep sky objects and I heard uh, many other astrophotographers say that the Crescent Nebula should be renamed uh, since it really looks like a really really big brains. Could you imagine having brains that stretch 26 light years across? I mean how smart would you be? You would probably actually be the smartest person probably the smartest being in the whole universe you are wasting my time but yeah the crescent nebula really looks like uh, a pair of big brains and that's what sparked my interest in this uh, amazing object because it's really fascinating to look at but uh, you will have to spend uh, quite a lot of time uh, on this nebula since it's uh, very very faint so I already spent uh, two nights imaging this target uh, taking 600 second exposures. I'm using the UHC filter and I have my focal reducer slash uh, field flattener on which lets uh, a little bit more light uh, to the sensor. But yeah, maybe some of you already noticed that uh, tonight I'm using the Canon 600D and that's because my 1100D uh, died. Well, it didn't die but, uh, but it constantly shows the error 30 which I think it means that uh, it has some issues with the shutter but the funny thing is that the camera actually takes uh, images normally and saves them uh, on the SD card uh, it's just that uh, when the arrow shows up uh, I always get uh, disconnected from the computer and uh, I can um, and I can't uh, start my sequence uh, without uh, losing the connection uh, to the computer so I didn't waste too much time and uh, I just purchased uh, the 600D which was not that expensive and I really didn't want to waste too much uh, nights uh, without a camera so uh, it was a no-brainer to get uh, a new camera as soon as possible but the modification on this camera was quite a bit more tricky so if you have a 600D and you're planning to modify it uh, I have only one tip for you and that is to be uh, really patient and, uh, and work slowly and uh, really make sure that you organize your screws you will have to make a decision if you are going to keep the uh, low pass filter because it has a connection connected to the glass for cleaning the sensor but I just decided to leave it out so now I have a full spectrum mode again and I just turned off the sensor cleaning option in the menu of the camera but uh, other than that we luckily had uh, quite a lot of um, clear nights uh, in a row and of course I used uh, every single one of them and I know I said that uh, in the previous video but uh, I'm really happy that the nights are getting uh, longer and some of the best targets are just around the corner I just hope that the story from last year won't uh, repeat because uh, last year we were covered in clouds from mid-November all the way through the end of uh, February so I really couldn't image uh, that much uh, last year but yeah hopefully the weather will be a little bit uh, kinder this year and okay I see that I'm talking about the weather again so this is the last thing I wanted to mention so I promised a video on a more simple setup so that's coming up uh, very shortly mm -hmm. 